Edit. To clarify, the only reason we agreed to date while being co-workers is because I received licensing to move up in my career and will be leaving the job in the next few weeks. In terms of other points made, yes, I agree age can come with life experience. Truth be told, I think we are on the same page mentally and experientially. I have yet to meet a man my age that I connect with regarding life experience and intelligence. This has been very difficult for me as I have dated so many men and become depressed at the fact that I cannot connect with them whatsoever. Not because of personality, but because of maturity and life experience. He has more work experience. He started his own business. But he's also learning a lot in our current field, whereas I have advanced. For example, in our current job, I was basically his boss training him. We have lived very similar lives, but I think he did not mature until his 30s. I have found this to be true with 99% of the men I meet, at least in my city. For instance, I got sober at 19, went to grad school, and now work in the field. He didn't get sober until 30, and really didn't start to mature until then. I have asked about his dating history. He has only ever dated women his age or older. A primary reason for why those relationships didn't last is that one, he was an addict and obviously could not have a healthy relationship in the throes of addiction. And two, once he got sober and began to seriously date, he only ever met women that were avoidant, wanting a relationship, then disappearing, then coming back. This is also very common in our city as everyone is afraid of commitment. And hookup culture is still very strong into people's 40s. Because of this, he just stopped dating altogether. So far, he has always said that I'm smarter than him and has never used his age against me. That was something I worried about, but he has never used his age as an arguing point. Like, I'm older, I know best. Maybe he would in the future, I don't know. My dad only met him because we started going to a new church and my dad wanted to come. Lastly, I have never wanted my mom to meet him. I definitely think it's too soon. But when she said she never would, I was disheartened. I do think at some point in the future, I would like her to, but I am definitely not pushing for that right now. The biggest takeaway I had from the comments are issues that can occur later in life. I'll be honest, he's far more active than me, loves to surf, ski, rock climb, etc. But I can see how at some point, he might be forced to slow down, while I may still maintain somewhat of an active lifestyle. That, in combination with becoming a widow, seems awful. There's no sugar coating it. Why this sucks? We are only two months into dating, but I feel like I'm forced to consider such big issues so early on. At two months, we should be getting to know each other. But instead, I'm just thinking about, how will we get along in old age? Can I be happy as a widow? It all seems very intense to think about so early on into getting to know someone. So I'm not sure if it's productive to even be thinking about that right now, or if I should just continue getting to know him to see if he's a good match for me. This man started working at my job, and as soon as I saw him, there was an instant attraction. Then I overheard him tell my boss, he's 37. I didn't know what to think because I've only dated guys my age. But day after day, we grew closer to each other and could not hide our feelings. He asked me out and we've been dating for about two months now. There is nothing about him I would change or view as red flags. The way he communicates, empathizes, and lives life is so admirable. He's always so humble, wants to be the best person to others, and is so thoughtful. Well, my mom immediately gave her stamp of disapproval and said she refused to ever meet him, and that any man dating someone my age is just trying to take advantage of me. I really cannot see how that would ever be the case with him. Because of this, my mom is constantly calling me or texting me, starting arguments about him. Today, for instance, she said, since you clearly don't know how to pick men for yourself, I have messaged guys I saw on TikTok that might be a better fit for you. This is not a joke. My mom literally went to TikTok and DM'd people. It's to the point where I feel like I can't even enjoy the time I spend with my mom because it turns into an argument about him. Almost like, if I am happy with him, then she is going to be unhappy. And then I can't have a good relationship with her. This has been really tough on me because my family is super important to me. My dad met him and thinks he is a wonderful person. My brother has no opinions about it. It's mainly my mom. 
I want to know, is she being completely irrational or does she have grounds to stand on with men wanting to take advantage of younger women? And does anyone have suggestions as to how I should proceed forward? I would like to send her a text that one, opens her up to the idea of meeting him. Two, conveys that her opinions, lush arguments, are causing a lot of stress on me. And three, that he makes me happy. I want to maintain a close relationship with her while dating him, but she's making it difficult. Would love some advice on how to craft this text, as well as any input from people that may see her side. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, here's the deal. I'm 33. I was single a few years ago and dating a variety of ages, younger, the same age and older, I can assure you that 99% of the women your age simply weren't on the same page as me. Not their fault, not my fault. The truth is that it's no secret that women are sometimes attracted to older men. There were younger women who I had dated who seemed interested in me, despite having had nothing in common and I had no interest in them. I think they just thought I was mature. Whenever I meet guys who are dating someone significantly younger, I can't help but feel they're total creeps. Yes, I'm sure he says all the right things. Yes, I'm sure he hasn't done anything to set off any alarms. All that to say, I can assure you that he's in a different place in his life. He won't fully understand you, and you won't fully understand him. I'm sure you're very attracted to him, and I'm sure he's attracted to you. That's about it. He'll use his maturity to convince you that there's something more to the relationship. Comment two, I'm more concerned about the dating a coworker aspect than the age gap, which can also be a concern. One, if work finds out, one or both of you could be let go. It's also incredibly hard to keep it professional when you have a romantic relationship. It's even harder if you have an ugly breakup. The majority of times dating coworkers results in having to leave your current workplace at some point to avoid drama. Two, age gaps of over 10 years can lead to the older person being dismissive of the younger person's ideas input. The older one is wiser and they have done this before. When it comes to buying houses, finances, cars, taxes, splitting bills, etc. And because of that, there's a history of older people taking advantage of the younger person. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the support on my last post. It's been a month since then, and boy, do I have an update for you all. So remember how my mom was totally against my relationship with my older boyfriend? Well, things escalated. She actually showed up at my work to confront him. She caused a scene, accusing him of all sorts of nonsense. My boss had to step in and it was super embarrassing. I was furious with her for crossing that line. But that's not even the juiciest part. My boyfriend and I had been getting along great, or so I thought. Turns out, he's been keeping a pretty big secret from me. Remember how I mentioned he had a history of addiction? Well, he's been attending meetings, which I totally support. But what he didn't tell me was that he's been seeing his ex at these meetings. They've been supporting each other, and I found out they kissed. I was devastated when I found out, and we had a huge fight about it. In the midst of all this drama, my dad tried to play peacemaker. He invited my boyfriend and me over for dinner, hoping to smooth things over. It was a disaster. My mom refused to join us at the table and spent the evening locked in her room. The tension was unbearable. And as if that wasn't enough, my boyfriend's ex started showing up at my work. She's been trying to talk to me, saying she wants to clear the air. I've been avoiding her, but it's like she's stalking me. It's creepy, and I'm starting to feel unsafe. Now let's talk about my career. I've been working hard, and my licensing finally came through. I was looking forward to moving up and leaving my current job, especially with all the drama. But guess what? My boyfriend, who I've been training, is being considered for the position I was eyeing. It's like a slap in the face. I've been there longer and have more experience, but because he's older and a guy, they're seriously considering him. I've been feeling so betrayed by everyone. My mom's interference, my boyfriend's lies, and now my job's apparent favoritism. It's like I can't catch a break. But karma has a funny way of working things out. My boyfriend's ex, who's been pestering me, accidentally sent me a text meant for him. It was a picture of them together, looking way too cozy. I confronted him and he had no choice but to come clean about everything. We broke up and it was messy. 
The next day, my boss pulled me aside. He'd heard about the breakup and the ex's behavior at work. He apologized for not taking my side sooner and offered me the promotion on the spot. He said he realized that I was the right person for the job all along. As for my mom, she's still stubborn as ever. But after the breakup, she actually reached out to me. She said she was sorry for how she acted and that she just wanted what was best for me. We're slowly rebuilding our relationship, but it's going to take time. Wife gets slapped by her sister's creepy husband. So I plan to keep the peace. But then sister drops divorce bomb at dinner. And now creepy husband pleads with wife to stay quiet. For context, my 29-year-old male wife, 27-year-old female, is fairly close to her older sister Jenny, 35-year-old female, and has a better relationship with her than any of her other siblings. Jenny has been married to Johnny, 36-year-old male, for about a decade. Johnny has always had a creepy vibe with women, will openly flirt with them in front of her, and so on. He has had at least one affair that she knows about, but there is most likely more. She constantly says she is going to divorce him, but no action ever comes of it. They have no kids and both have full-time jobs. So no one else in the family understands why she puts up with his behavior. Johnny and I have always been on relatively good terms, and I try to get along with him as best as I can for my wife and Jenny's sake. He will sometimes make weird comments to my wife or other female family members at family functions, birthday parties, and so on, but nothing too extreme. The family normally just ignores it and then talks negatively about him behind his back. The situation. This past weekend, Jenny had a birthday party at her house. We all got pretty drunk and everyone was having a good time. My wife and I were in the kitchen talking with others and had our backs turned to the living room. Jenny walked into the kitchen behind my wife and slapped her butt as a joke. Then Johnny walked in behind and also slapped my wife's butt as a joke. Jenny and I saw it, along with several others at the party. No one said anything, and I could tell my wife was extremely uncomfortable. I was furious, but I didn't want to cause a scene or overreact and embarrass my wife or Jenny. But I feel like I made a bad call by staying silent. Jenny broke the silence by telling my wife that she can slap Johnny on the butt too, to which my wife declined to do. Everything was awkward after that, and we left the party shortly after. My wife doesn't know who to talk to about it as she doesn't want to ruin her relationship with Jenny. A few months ago, her married cousin, who was also at this party, slapped my butt twice when she was drunk, and it made my wife and I uncomfortable. But we kind of just ignored it. We normally see all of these family members every month or two, as well as holidays. I don't know what to do. On one hand, I feel like I need to keep the peace so my wife can have relationships with her family members, and especially Jenny. On the other hand, I feel that many of them, and certainly Johnny, have no respect for me, my wife, or his wife, and I should not feel forced to see him or be cordial with him. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. Everybody made mistakes before the situation. I didn't even read the situation because Johnny is a missing stare. Johnny crossed the line, and learned that there were no consequences, so he crossed it. That's what people who behave poorly do, and it's why we shouldn't let them get away with crossing the line. Okay, I read the situation. If you keep trying to maintain peace, you're going to continue feeling uncomfortable. Maybe exposing how terrible Johnny is will motivate Jenny to stop tolerating him. Comment two, you all need to start expressing your boundaries. Please do not slap my butt only my spouse is allowed to do that. Or, I do not want anyone touching my butt. Please do not do that again. If you don't want to cause a scene, you can talk privately with that person. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the comments on my last post. I really appreciated the advice and support, so... It's been a week since the birthday party incident. And boy, do I have an update for you all. After the party, my wife and I had a long talk. She was really shaken up by what happened, and I was still pretty angry. We decided that we couldn't just let this slide, so we agreed that I would talk to Jenny about Johnny's behavior. It was a tough decision because my wife didn't want to cause a rift, but we both knew it was necessary. I called Jenny and asked if we could meet up. She agreed, and we met at a coffee shop the next day. I brought up the incident at the party, and Jenny's face just dropped. She looked like she was carrying the weight of the world on her shoulders. 
I told her how uncomfortable Johnny made my wife and that his actions were out of line. Jenny sighed and confessed that she knew Johnny had been inappropriate with other women in the past, but she had hoped he would change. Now here's where things get really crazy. Jenny told me that she had been planning to leave Johnny for a while. She had found out about another affair he had a few months back with none other than the married cousin who had slapped my butt at a previous family gathering. I was floored. Jenny had kept this to herself because she didn't want to cause drama within the family, especially since the cousin's husband was unaware of the affair. Jenny also revealed that she had been saving money in a separate account, preparing for a divorce. She had been feeling trapped in her marriage, but she was scared of starting over. I reassured her that my wife and I would support her no matter what. The next family gathering was a dinner at my in-law's house. It was tense, to say the least. Johnny was there, acting like nothing had happened. My wife was visibly uncomfortable, and I was on edge. Halfway through the dinner, the cousin arrived with her husband. You could cut the tension with a knife. Then, out of nowhere, Johnny got up and made a toast. He started talking about family and forgiveness, and I could see Jenny's face turning red with anger. She stood up, interrupting Johnny, and announced to everyone that she was filing for divorce. The room went silent. Jenny looked at Johnny and said, and you know exactly why. Johnny tried to play it off, but Jenny wasn't having it. She turned to the cousin and said, and you should probably tell your husband about your little affair with my soon-to-be ex-husband. The cousin's face went white and her husband looked at her, shocked. The cousin's husband stood up and for a moment I thought he was going to cause a scene. But instead, he just asked his wife if it was true. When she didn't answer, he quietly left the room. The cousin ran after him and the rest of us were left in stunned silence. After that bombshell, the dinner pretty much ended. My wife and I left with Jenny, who was a mix of relieved and terrified. On the drive home, Jenny thanked us for our support and said she felt like a huge weight had been lifted off her shoulders. But just when we thought the drama was over, my wife's phone rang. It was the cousin's husband. He was at a bar and he wanted to talk. My wife looked at me and I nodded. We dropped Jenny off and headed to the bar. The cousin's husband was there, looking defeated. He told us that he had suspected something was going on, but didn't want to believe it. He thanked us for being honest with him and said he didn't know what he was going to do next. As we were talking, my wife's phone buzzed. It was a message from Johnny. He was begging her not to tell anyone else about the affair. My wife showed me the message, and we both knew that we couldn't keep his secret. It wasn't just about us anymore. It was about doing what was right. We told the cousin's husband that we would support him, just like we were supporting Jenny. He nodded, and we left him to think things over. My friend gets back with toxic X for rides to surgery. But when she learns he's been wrecking her car, she dumps him, and takes self-defense classes while he loses all his friends. Before I begin, here's a bit of context. M is really beautiful, like 10 out of 10 gorgeous. She's dated guys with money who buy her nice gifts, and her recent XT bought her a lot of gifts and helped her out a bunch when she had a hard time and effort to win her back. T was very manipulative and emotionally hurtful, so she didn't get back with him. A few months ago, M had a situation with her Audi car that it cost a few thousand dollars to fix and it wasn't worth it to her. So she sold her car and saved to get herself a newer car. During that time, M recently broke up with her ex, T, in January last year. Even though they were broken up, he was still trying to get her back by driving her places since she didn't have a car. So. She could get groceries, run errands, etc. After a few months of this, M stopped contact with T since she was 100% done with him. So she didn't have anyone to give her rides. She asked me to grab her when I would go do my Costco runs, which I do one to two times a month, and I agreed. Her place is about 25 minutes from me, but I wanted to help her out, and I was going there anyway, so it wasn't a problem for me. There were also times when she wanted to go to the mall or go out to eat, so I would pick her up, go to the place, and drop her off before getting home, 25 minutes later myself. I truly did not mind this, because she's one of my closest friends, and I wanted to spend time with her and help her out as well. I never asked for gas money, 
and M had paid for my meals a couple times as a thank you, which I appreciated. M finally got a car last month and all is good. We still talk and hang out. M had a surgery on Tuesday where she would be under anesthesia. So she called me last week to ask if I can drive her since the clinic was near my place. I asked her what time and she said it was at 7.15 a.m. I was driving at the time and said, oh, let me look at my schedule and I'll let you know in a few. M texted me then asking if I could just drop her off at home and she could find a ride there. I was still driving so I didn't respond right away and then a few minutes later, she messaged me saying that it's okay. She'll figure it out. I told her sorry I was driving, but that I can drop her off after her appointment no problem. I explained if I picked her up before her appointment, I would have to get up at 5.30 to get ready and leave my place by 6 so I can get her. And that it is too early for me. But I have no problem getting her after her appointment. She replied, I just don't want to be a burden. And I reassured her that I'm fine with getting her after... She didn't reply to that, but I thought nothing of it. I tried to do small talk with her a couple of days later, but she only responded with a thumbs up, so I didn't say anything until Monday. I asked if she needed me to pick her up, and she said no, that she has it covered. On Tuesday, I texted her wishing that the surgery went well and to let me know if she needs help with anything. Got left unread with no reply since... I'm thinking about sending her a text later asking if I upset her but I'm honestly flabbergasted that she's giving me the silent treatment over this. I still offered to get her, just not both times. It would still be an hour out of my day to help her out. And this was after all the other times I've driven her the previous few months. How should I bring this up to her? Edit. The surgery is for a vein removal in her leg, and this is her second time having it done. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. A lot of hospitals do not allow surgeries if the person giving the transportation does not drop them off and identify themselves as the person transporting them home to ensure that people do not try to drive after anesthesia. Honestly, I would be a little offended if someone I thought was a close friend said they could not take me to a surgery just because it was too early for them. She is getting cut open, man. None of their requests for a ride sounded too unreasonable especially since you insisted it was never a problem before. Comment two, surgery is different from rides to other places. You usually ask your closest people to take you to surgeries, family and very close friends. Surgeries also often start very early and scheduling a later start is not always possible. My guess is that she may have been hoping that you would bring her in the morning because she was scared and would have liked the support. The way you responded probably made her wonder if you really were as close of a friend as she thought you were. Now for the update. Hey Reddit, remember my friend M who I used to drive around for Costco runs and stuff? Well, it's been a month since I last updated you guys. And boy, do I have some news. So after M gave me the silent treatment for not being able to drive her to her surgery, things got pretty weird. I sent her that text asking if I upset her and she finally replied. She said she was just stressed about the surgery and didn't mean to be distant. I thought we were cool, but then she started acting strange. She'd only text me late at night and her messages were all over the place, like she wasn't herself. Turns out, M had started seeing T again, the manipulative ex. I couldn't believe it. After everything he put her through, she was back with him. But here's the kicker. She was only using him for rides since she didn't want to bother me anymore. I found this out because T's sister, who I know from way back, told me they were hanging out again. She said T was bragging about how he was going to win M back for good this time. One day I was at the mall and I saw M and T together. It was so awkward. M looked super uncomfortable and T was being his usual overbearing self. I just waved and kept walking. Later that day, M texted me saying she was sorry I had to see that and that she didn't know how to get out of the situation with T. Now here's where things get really crazy. M's new car, it started having problems, like big problems. The engine was making weird noises and it was stalling all the time. She took it to the mechanic and guess what? T had been messing with her car. He was sabotaging it so she'd have to rely on him for rides. The mechanic found parts that were loosened and tampered with. It was insane. M was furious. 
She confronted T, and there was this huge blowout in the middle of the street. She told him it was over for good and that she knew what he'd been doing to her car. T tried to deny it, but M had the proof from the mechanic. She threatened to call the cops if he ever came near her or her car again. After that, M was pretty shaken up. She asked me to come over because she didn't want to be alone. I went and we talked for hours. She told me about how T had been trying to control her again and how she felt so stupid for letting him back into her life. I told her it wasn't her fault and that T was the one to blame. M decided to take some self-defense classes after that. She said she never wanted to feel powerless again. And you know what? She's been doing great. She's more confident and she's learned a lot. Plus, her car's been running smoothly since T's been out of the picture. But here's the subtle justice part. T's sister, the one who told me about them hanging out, she's been spreading the word about what T did to M's car. Now everyone knows what kind of guy he is. His friends are ditching him, and he's become kind of a pariah in our social circle. No one wants anything to do with a guy who'd sabotage someone's car just to manipulate them. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.